OK, yes, yeah, so it's just... <laughs> well, I meant kind of that way, but, you know, it's... it's a... <laughs> so we're going to talk about shapes of constant width. This is what I want to show you. And to show you, I've built a sort of diorama. Uh, well, what I've done, I've uh, stuck a Lego man to a ruler. So th there it is. And I want you to imagine that you're this Lego man. It's annoying. You've been stuck to a ruler, so you can't move around. But you have the idea, maybe if I put some shapes between the ruler and the ground, I'll be able to move around. And so you experiment in different ways. The first thing you try, maybe, is some hexagons. So you see, the hexagons, they don't work very well, because as the hexagons rotate, the height changes. Um, and it's a bumpy ride. So hexagons are not shapes of constant width or height. They're shapes of non-constant width, non-constant height. So, Brady, what shape would I have to put in there to make this work? Well, I'm obviously like a circle, a yeah, wheel. Yeah, greatest invention of all time. There it is. And of course, the reason that works is as a circle rotates, the height stays the same, the width stays the same. And that's the only shape that can work, right? That's why circles are round. Uh, it wouldn't work with a square. It wouldn't work with a triangle. Would it work with a triangle, but if we sort of rounded the faces a little bit? Probably not. Uh, well, let's, let's try that. So these... These are called Releo triangles. I might not be pronouncing that right. Someone correct me in the comments. Uh, I'm sure you will. Um, <laughs> so here it is, right. right? So they're not circles, but they're the same height all the way around. They're the same width all the way around. No matter how you turn these shapes, they are the same width, even though they're not circles. Yeah, when I first saw that, that kind of blew my mind a little bit. Um, That's pretty cool. That's it's cool, isn't it? Kind of Skipping past it, <laughs> why don't we make wheels like that? Um, okay, so actually the reason we don't make wheels like this uh, is because if you put a central axis in there, you would bump, bump up and down because the distance from the centre to the edge does change. It's the distance from the top to the bottom that doesn't change. Actually, someone has built a bike. It was to commemorate the Beijing Olympics, I think, a few years ago, and the, the frame of the bike rested on top of the wheels, and so this shape of wheel could then work in that situation. It's also used in something called a Wankel engine, but we won't talk about that. I'll show you how to, uh, to make one of these. Uh, you take an odd-sided shape, uh, say a triangle like this, and I'm using an equilateral triangle, and you just round off the faces as if you, you, you've got a compass. You put the compass point on, on one of the corners and then sort of go uh, like that, and, and, and then like that, and then like that. So let's just do that. Go like that, uh, like that, like that. If you started with a seven-sided shape, then you end up with uh, 50p coins. So uh, 50p coins are shapes of constant width. If you get a hold of two 50p coins and a couple of books, for example, and roll the books around, they, they will stay the same distance apart because even though they're not circles, 50p coins are shapes of constant width. Well, they make them like that uh, because they can, um, and it's an interesting thing, but uh, coins have to be shapes of constant width to work in vending machines. Vending machines measure the width of a coin as it goes through, so if that were to change, the vending machine wouldn't know necessarily what coin you're putting in. So you can make coins this way, so they do. So uh, that's the that's the Releo triangle, or Releo triangle, I think. I've drawn that quite well, look. That's amazing. <laughs> I can't believe that. Very impressed. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, you can actually... I'm not going to get that smug <laughs> smile. <laughs> um, so uh, you can take any triangle and turn it into a shape of constant width. This one is a 3-4-5 triangle, and so uh, it shows you actually the, uh, how you have to lengthen the edges here. So that's a that's a single unit extended there and two units extended out there. I actually got quite obsessed <laughs> about this when I started to think about, is there a, a three-dimensional equivalent to this? So the three-dimensional equivalent of uh, a circle is... A sphere. A sphere. So if you take uh, three now spheres, I can roll this around on here like that. The plane of the table and the plane of this board stay the same distance apart because uh, spheres are solids of constant width, we call them. Um, but there are three-dimensional equivalents of shapes of constant width that are non-spherical. The way to make them is you take like one of these and you, you make a solid of rotation like that. So you just spin it around and it sweeps out a three-dimensional shape. So this is a shape that you can um, turn on a lathe. So I, I, I went online and I had a look around. Does anyone, uh, does anyone have these things? 
I eventually came across a book called How Round Is Your Circle by John Bryant and Chris Sanguin. They had some of these shapes on the front cover and I said, you know, can I get some of these? I sent, I sent uh, Chris an email. I was trying to find the email actually. I said something like, you know, I love your shapes of constant width. Uh, where did you get them? And he said, well, uh, I had thousands made with an educational grant. How many would you like? So he sent me uh, a whole load of them. He sent about 50. Here's, here's uh, three of them here. It's a shape of constant width that's uh, been rotated into a solid of constant width. And so they work as well. So, so, so there you go. Now, um, I, I was very happy with that, but then if you look at the front cover of Chris Sanguin's book, I recommend you, you check it out. His solids of constant width are metal, and, and they're pointy as well. These have been cleverly rounded to make them wear a bit better, but I wanted some, um, I, I wanted some metal ones, and I wanted them to be pointy. Uh, so I, I uh, searched around on the internet and I eventually found uh, a forum for lathe enthusiasts. And uh, they all said, it can't be done, you can't do this, uh, it's not something you can turn on a lathe. And then I, I got brilliantly, I got a private message from one guy saying, I'll do it for you. So these are my uh, metallic uh, solids of constant width. Wow. So what I do with these, I, I, I put them, I, I line them up and I stand on this and I roll around on them. Not just for fun, I mean for shows and stuff. <laughs> and for fun. You can't uh, tell us that enough. You can't just say that. Uh, you can't just drop that and then not do it. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. Now, we are on a bit of carpet, so it might not work as well, but... Well, I might need someone to give me a push. I don't know how you feel about that. Go on, go. Get in there. Help me out. Okay. Yeah, so just... <laughs> well, I meant kind of that way, but, you know, it's... it's <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, here we go. So push me towards these extra ones here. Okay, yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go, that's it. Yeah, there's an infinite number of those as well because, again, I could take the, the, the pentagon and rotate that, and that would become one. Uh, I could take, you know, the 50p coin and rotate, and that would be one, or the nine sided shape, 11 sided shape, whatever. But there is a more interesting example which is, instead of just doing a solid of rotation, which maybe it feels a bit like cheating. So if you take the three-dimensional equivalent of a triangle, which is a tetrahedron, and round off the faces of that, then uh, it's actually not quite a solid of constant width. You have to round off three of the edges as well. Um, so this doesn't have, it's not a solid of rotation anymore. It has less symmetry. It's even more kind of counterintuitive. It, it seems less like it could be a, a solid of constant width. Um, and it's called a Meissner tetrahedron. You can't get these turned on a lathe, but here they are made in, in plastic. You can see they've got uh, three slightly rounded edges, which is something you have to do to get it to work. Three straight edges like that, or sharp edges, should I say. Um, and then basically rounded off faces, um, using the op again, using the opposite corner as a guide. So that point there is the centre of this sphere here. Um, and so these are, believe it or not, solids of constant width. Um, let's see if I can... Nice. And that's a nice oddity. Yeah. Is it, are these useful? Do, do engineers and people use these for anything? Uh, engineers use the, the Raleo triangle or uh, Rollo triangle uh, in the Wankel engine. And that's that's about. Oh, you can use. There's a drill as well with, uh, and it's got. A, it, it, it uses that triangle in there somewhere, and you can use it to cut a square hole. You can drill a square hole with it. Yeah. One thing I, I thought is maybe ball bearings that won't roll away. You can put it on a slope, and it doesn't. Well, it's going to slide because it's slippy, but it's it's not going to roll because the centre of mass is really low. That's a good idea. It, 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 that could be useful for something, but... Dragon's Den? <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll give, it, give it a whirl. So I know what you're all thinking. Where can I get my very own shape or solid of constant width? And the answer is... Steve and the guys at Maths Gear have had them made for you. Check it out. That is the ultimate geeky Christmas present right there. What a great little stocking filler. I get no commission from this, I'm just saying, that's a great present. I'd love to have one of them under the tree. I think the shapes here come in wood or acrylic, and here's the solids. I've put a link in the video description. You're crazy if you don't check it out.